Yeah. All right, we're ready to start. Yeah, we're then uh, your expectation of pleasure is going to start. Absolutely, yeah. sir. Mark, you can send it right to the right to Tom. Will do. Good evening, everyone. This is Dallas Social Testmasters. It is. I don't know why I'm looking at this. This does not have a date on it. It doesn't do me any darn good. But it is March 24th, which I only remember because last time it was the day of St. Patrick's Day. And we have one or two people online only, and the rest of us are here in the room. I am here to do the invocation pledge. It's been an interesting time getting everything set up today. As they say, it's certainly been a gala day. And as Groucho Marx would say, and a gala day has got to be enough for anybody. So a couple of quick things just to, so that you're aware that we're going to start doing it. We, for anybody who ends up signing up guests from now on, take a look over there. You will see that we have a new guest sign-in sheet, the new guest sign-in sheet. I've got one here, Rob. I can show it as well here. But it basically has on it a QR code. And if you've been a few Toastmasters International recently, you know that when you sign in at Toastmasters International for any of the training, you go through that in order to do the sign in for that. Most people, if they have an iPhone and point it directly at it, it will immediately take us to the sign in form on our website and we'll get an email. If you have an Android, Rob, I don't know, my Android still requires an app. Does your Android, is yours new enough that it doesn't require an app to get there? Or can yeah, you do it? Android still requires an app. Not Android not. still requires an app. So if they are using Android, they will still have to have a QR code app. Probably by this point, it's been in all the restaurants on all the tables. Probably most people have one, but just in case, if they've got an Android, that's what the issue is. And if all else fails, do it on your own device, show it to them, and then let them do the sign-in. I have a little bit more on that later, but I just wanted to let you know, if you happen to help anybody with sign-in, that's the way we're making sure that we can actually read the stuff, because I am sick and tired of not being able to read 10 digits. People's handwriting is so bad. You can't even read the 10 digits, much less their names, much less their phone numbers or anything else, or, or you know what this is. So, with that, let's go ahead and start our meeting. Our meeting tonight, sorry for the late start, it's going to be led by Tom Turkey. Tom, come on up. Thank you, Mark. Well, All right. Can I, so, I was going to say, well, I, I was just going to introduce you and say, let's uh, see. Let me do the Pledge of Allegiance. So, for those of you who are so inclined, we have a flag over here, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And for anyone who has never had to do that and is concerned about it, remember the most important words are, I pledge allegiance. After that, you can go, wah, 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 wah. nobody will know because everybody else is talking. Tom. Thank you, Mark. Our theme for tonight is March Madness, which turns out to have a different meaning than I intended when I planned that as the theme. I was going to talk and research a bunch of really fun facts about the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Not all musclehead sports facts, although I had some of those. But I actually had lots of interesting stuff on the history of the tournament, the financial impact the financial anti-impact of it, all that kind of stuff. In the interest of time, I'm going to cut it really short. Let's move on. Sorry, that's a teaser for you. Let's move on to the introduction of the duty holder. So let's start with timer. Mark, can you come up and tell us about your role as timer this evening? As timer, I will track the times on the prepared speeches, the table topics, and the evaluation. When the person that's speaking hits the minimum amount of time, I'll display the green card. When they hit the midpoint between the minimum and the maximum, I'll display yellow. When they reach the maximum time, I'll display red. And at that point, you'll have 30 seconds to wrap up. And I will not make any further type of comment or gesture or anything. You'll just wrap up as quickly as you can. And what I anticipate doing for our Madeline's speech is maybe to sit on the front of the stage so I can display the cards and she will be able to see it. 
from her residence. And since we have a variety of times we're using tonight, a couple of different times on the prepared speeches, before we get into the various subjects, like table topics or the speeches, then whoever's doing the introductions will remind you of the time limits that are applicable. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Mark. Our next duty holder is Lisa. Lisa, come on up and tell us about your job as posture monitor. As posture monitor, I'll be watching all meeting attendees to identify unusual or distracting postures such as hands in pockets, forward or reverse big leaf, hair flipping, foot tapping, or other distracting gestures. When I notice these slips, I will ring the posture bell and make a note about it. I will not ring the bell during prepared speeches unless I'm requested to do so by the speaker and will keep track of the posture by taking notes. I will, I will note an audience member's posture if it's indicated that he or she is not paying attention to the speaker. I'll report the results at the end of the meeting when called upon by the general evaluator. Thank you, Lisa. And next up, we have Dega Newland, who will be performing double du duty as both our grammarian and our awe calendar. Dega, you want to tell us about your duty? All right, yes, as I say, I'm performing two roles. First is going to be all counter, so I'll be looking for the uhs, ums, you knows, pregnant pauses, so's. And if I hear those, I will try to click this on time. Just to remind you, and of course, I will not do it during the prepared speeches. And as a grammarian, I'll be looking for good and bad uses of the English language and make reports about the, you know, make notations throughout the evening and also present the word of the day, which is going to be exalt. And it's a verb, it means to elevate, or to praise, or to stimulate, or to intensify. So if you want to uh, participate in, if you're going to participate in the table topics, you must use the word of the day. It's one of the requirements to qualify. But anybody else, please, if you can, you know, try to fit it in when you're speaking up here. And of course, I will give my report on both sections at the end of the meeting. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you. Our last duty holder this evening is Mark Schroeder, who agreed today to step in as our vote counter. Mark. Thank you so much, Tom. Yes, as vote counter, my job today is to count the votes. If you're in the room, you see the little blue cups, or I guess they're teal cups on the table. That's where we vote. There are small slips on each of the tables with ballots and you will tear off the appropriate section of the ballot. There is one that is that we do, which is big three, which is not listed there. Just tear off something and type in big three so that we know what it's for. And I will be collecting the ballots. At the end of the meeting, those go toward the decision for the best of the, the big three and the best speaker, etc. The other thing, of course, is if you're a guest, we don't have any guests tonight, but if we did, guests are certainly welcome to vote as well. And again, while you've got the ballots, remember that our speakers love comments, so we use the ballots as well to send comments to our speakers. If there happens to be a tie, I break the tie. I don't tell you that I broke the tie because if I tell you, then you know how I voted. Mr. T Mr. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. All right, I think we can all exult in the fact that the meeting is finally moving. Thanks very much. So I, I said I would curtail my remarks, but I won't cut them back to zero on, the, on March Madness. So the tournament, the men's basketball tournament started in 1939, but it really took off in the late 70s, early 80s. And it's a big deal. It's the reason you can't find a damn table at any restaurant or bar with a TV. A hundred million people will watch the games across all 68 games across the broadcast. It generates 1.4 billion in ad revenue for the broadcasters, both the, the broadcasters online, CBS and Turner, and then their streaming services. So that's, that's big money, that's also big viewership. 
All right, so enough of that. Let's get started on our prepared speeches, also a big deal. Our first speech, our first speaker is Suleiman, and John is gonna tell us a little bit about Suleiman's objectives, his time, and, and tee off his speech. John. Good evening, fellow host, masters, and guests. Suleiman's doing his icebreaker tonight. So this is the first speech that anybody gives. It's basically a speech to let us get to know you and see what you're like, what your speaking skills are, and where we're gonna get you to start from. The member is completing his first speech. The goal is to give the member an effective evaluation of his or her speech and delivery style. Because the icebreaker, the first project the member completes, can choose any kind of note section or any other kind of numerical score that I'm gonna give you. And we're just gonna see how you do tonight. Thank you, sir. Back to you. Thanks very much. All right, see you on. We're looking forward to it. Three pillars of an amazing. Oh yes. Oh, you have the timer. Oh, okay. Thank you. And who's our timer again? That's Mark. So the the agenda is incorrect. It's four to six minutes, not five to seven. Right, thank you. You bet. All right. Suleiman, three pillars of an amazing day. Three pillars of an amazing day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for being here and for that first season. That's per season. Wow. Yeah. I feel exalted being up here. So my speech today is called Three Pillars to an Amazing Day. And it's my first speech. So I'm also going to tell you a little bit about myself. And then I'm going to share what three pillars of an amazing day are, in my opinion. So I'm a new member. And my name is Solomon. I'm 36 years old. And I've lived in Dallas since 2006. A fun fact is I have lived within one mile of Ozona for all 16 years. So I came to college at SMU and then I've, I've lived around here ever since. So this is, this is my neighborhood. I love to work out, I love to read and learn, and I like to, I like to try different restaurants. Something quirky about me is that every week, one of the metrics I measure is whether or not I'm doing something different. So every week I try and do something different and that brings variety and richness into my life. You know, I've reflected a lot in, in the last few years about what my purpose in life is. And, you know, I've come to the realization or conclusion that my purpose in life is to elevate other people's lives. And so I have two avenues or vehicles through which I fulfill my purpose. One is I have an app and it's called Connect with the K and it helps people make new friends. And so we have a goal and a mission to help a billion people make one new friend by 2030. And so I direct my creative energy towards that and making a positive impact through that. And then the second vehicle of impact that I use is sharing my insights. So every day I do a post on social media. It can be like a short video, it's one minute or less or like a text post. And it's just insights, insights that would elevate. Um, for example, the one from yesterday was quality over quantity, right? Um, the one for today is going to be pause to accelerate. Those are some of the kind of insights I share. Reasons for joining Toastmasters. I have three reasons why I joined Toastmasters. One is to just improve my overall general communication as an individual. The other is I'm close to figuring out our innovation with the app. And so I'm now going to have to start sharing my mission and vision with investors, with team members, with customers. And so I want to make sure that I'm able to communicate clearly and concisely. And the third reason for joining Toastmasters is to improve my delivery of the short videos I do on social media so that the people who get elevated by them can get the message clearly. Goals for Toastmasters. So this is my first speech and I'm going to meet, meet with my mentor, Rob, 
after this, and we're going to create a plan for this year and determine what a goal is. My intention with the goal is to have a stretch goal that's outside my comfort zone that makes me push this year. So by the end of the year, I've transformed as an individual in this capacity. So that's a little bit about me. And now I'll transition to what three pillars to an amazing day are in my opinion. So, you know, I'll, and I'll start with a quote. And the quote is, your day is your life in miniature. How you live your days, so you live your life. So, you know, I've talked a lot about kind of how I want to structure my days. And after a lot of reflection, a lot of experimentation over the years, I've determ determined that the three pillars that it comes down to are growth, service, and living and experiencing life. So, and I'll, I'll jump into them a little bit, each one of them a little bit. So one is growth. Um, growth is important because life is growth. All of us are here at Toastmasters. We all have a goal for our speaking skills. Where we are and where we want to go, we have to grow into that. And so that's growth. Um, if you look at kids, they grow very quickly, right? You see them one year later and they're totally different people, right? But as we become adults, often we stop to grow. And so you meet an adult maybe three years later and they're talking about the same things and not much has changed, right? So just being intentional about growth. As one of my mentors says, growth is God. Um, some examples of ways you can grow is reading and learning, uh, developing new skills such as Toastmasters, meditating, journaling, reflecting, spending time alone, spending time with people who inspire you, trying different experiences. So the next pillar is service. So I believe that all of us are here to serve, right? You get extreme fulfillment from service. So all any job that we do is a way of service as well. And so um, I look at my work as service. I have an app. I also have a full-time job. Um, and I serve my customers there and through my app, I'm serving. So, you know, nothing fulfills you as much as serving and elevating other people's lives. So serve, there has to be service in your, in your days. And so that's the second pillar. And the third one is living and experiencing life or celebrating life. So it can't just be all work, 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 um, or service, service, or growth, right? You have to live and experience life as well. And so you have to have a metric there where you're like, what am I going to do? And a rich life is a life that's rich in experiences. So, um, you know, I was speaking to an older individual and he said, you know, if I could be younger, I would go and tell myself or coach myself on focusing on experiences because experiences are what create richness in life. So how I structure my days, first segment, I structure my day into three segments. First segment of my day is focused on growth. I elevate myself. Second segment of my day is focused on service. I elevate others. And third segment of my day is focused on celebrating and experiencing life. And that can be things like working out, spending time with amazing people like yourselves, uh, eating at a restaurant. And so to conclude, I shared with you a little bit about myself, the three pillars that I believe are an amazing day and how I structure my day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Suleiman. So, Please, everyone, remember, comments are welcome. So you can write them on the form on the table, or you can message Suleiman through WhatsApp and send him feedback, encouragement, comments, any observations. Next up, are we ready, Rob? Yes. Not yet? Filler. Filler. I get more fun facts, more madness. What could be better? So I previously mentioned when I was up, you asked me for more details on it. 1.4 billion in ad revenue per year. That's that's per year. To get that, the networks pay on average roughly a billion dollars a year to the NCAA for the broadcast rights. It's a roughly a 21 year contract and it's about 19 billion. So it's big money and also big profit though. A billion dollar cost and 1.4 billion revenue. It also generates for the city that hosts just the final four, not all the individual sites. This year it's in New Orleans and they project 200 million in revenue into the local businesses in the city for all the people coming into town to watch it. I believe 2018 was in Minneapolis and they only netted 140 million. So New Orleans is a little bit better about getting you to open your wallet, getting people to come, evidently if the numbers can be trusted. The other thing, so I mentioned the, 
the benefits to the the uh, networks, there's also a cost to this. So there are a couple different estimates, but in terms of lost productivity for all of the all of the employees out there who are watching games on the side, but at the low end, there's an estimate of $2 billion economic losses to the companies of America for their employees watching games, listening on the side, checking the scoreboard. And at the high end, it's 13 billion. And you can understand the reason for the big disparity is it's kind of hard to measure. You have to get people to fess up. But even if you believe the low end estimate, Two billion is a big cost. How you doing, Rob? You ready? Uh, outstanding. Okay, our second speaker tonight is Madeline Hitchcliffe, and Rob will be Madeline's evaluator. So Rob is going to tell us about her objectives, her speech title, and her projected time. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow members. Again, no guests, unfortunately, and Madeline. Madeline is working on project number two from her path. And that project involves giving a speech, getting feedback, giving another speech, which involves using that feedback that she got from her first speech, followed by eventually becoming an evaluator and evaluating someone else's speech. So this is the first part of that project where she gives a speech, and she's gonna get feedback that she will try to use in her next speech. Her speech topic can be about anything. There's no restrictions in that regard. Her speech time is, I see here, four to six minutes. So a little bit curtailed from the normal five to seven, but that's totally fine. And her title is Safe Space. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Rob. Madeline, are you there? Are you ready? I'm so ready, and I'm here. Wonderful. All right. Everyone, Madeline Hinchcliffe with space, Safe Space. Safe Space, Madeline Hinchcliffe. Last week, my rescue kitten escaped. So back in December, I had found her in the nearby storm drain in my apartment parking lot. The storm drain was her safe space and she'd retreat into it anytime someone came near. She was fully feral and completely unsocialized to humans, but I was able to trap her and partner with a rescue group where she received all her shots and was spayed. I then kept her in my bathroom for six weeks while I worked to earn her trust and to get her acclimated to my home and all the new scents, including my dog and cat's individual scents. By the beginning of March, I was able to get her with, or I was able to pet her with lots of approving purrs, and she was comfortable indoors around me and around my other pets. She had found a new safe space in my home. I decided it was time to take her into the vet and schedule the appointment for an upcoming Tuesday. I had both Monday and Tuesday off before I started my new job that next Wednesday. So that Tuesday morning, I was carrying her to my car when she became scared from being confined and managed to escape the crate and run away. I was due to start a new job tomorrow, that next day, and my beloved cat had just disappeared in the wind, leaving me in a state of shock at how quickly everything had all happened. I spent the majority of that day calling her, trying to find her, with no idea where she had gone or where she might be. My plans to have a relaxing day off before work were quickly shattered, and I was struggling to keep a level head. My cat had no longer felt she was in a safe space and had removed herself from the situation to my utmost dismay. With my new job set to start the next morning, this had me start thinking about safe spaces within my own life. Fast forward to the next day, Wednesday morning, where I'm logging into my new computer to start my new job. My cat is nowhere to be found and I'm still processing the fact that she may never come back. I know I'm about to meet a lot of new people where I'll be asked how I'm doing and expected to engage in lively and upbeat conversation. First impressions will also be made. When asked how I'm doing, do I tell the truth or just say that I'm doing fine and well because that's what's expected of me to say? Because the truth is that while I'm happy and grateful for my new job, I'm also scared for my cat, I'm still processing her escape, and do not currently feel fine or well. 
After a decent amount of rumination, I made the game time decision to be open about how I was feeling and to let everyone know it wasn't the best day I've ever had. I told them my kitten had run away the day before and I'm not sure where she is or if she'll come back. I made this decision because I want my workplace to be a safe space, both for myself and my coworkers. I still cringe a bit at the term safe space because I think it can be used in different ways, like avoiding personal growth, and not always are healthy. But the safe space I'm referring to is a positive one found within a communicative, communicative workplace where no one is afraid to be themselves. Where coworkers can speak out when they're having a horrible day without judgment or feel comfortable asking for help when they need it. My goal is to normalize and exalt a level of honesty in the workplace where we don't feel like we always have to say we're doing fine when we really aren't doing fine. Well, we don't need to deep dive in everyone's daily worries and concerns. And I think that maintaining a minimum level of professionalism is valuable. Keeping an open door and a listening ear available for coworkers to be honest about their situation cultivates employee retention, employee engagement, collaboration, creativity, and trust. A study by Gettysburg College actually found that over the average human lifetime, we spend about a third of our lives working. So that means a third of our lives is potentially spent masking the messier, very real human side of us simply to avoid ruffling any feathers. By instead normalizing the fact that everyone has great and not so great days and cultivating open communication, a third of our lives can be a little less fear-based and a little more real. I know workplace culture is a hop, skip, and jump away from my cat escaping her crate, but I do have to agree with her that safe spaces are important, and I personally personally had to leap out of some uncomfortable situations as well. Not all work environments care about communications or about open and honest dialogue, and it's a culture that has to be actively cultivated. Lucky for me, I've joined a company intent on having these honest conversations and plan to do my part to make my coworkers feel heard and free to be themselves. Also lucky for me, my cat has made her way back into her original safe space, the storm drain outside my apartment. I've yet to convince her that her new cat carrier is a safe space, but I'm hopeful that with our open line of communication in the form of copious pets and treats, that she will find a new safe space in both the carrier and in our home. Thank you, back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Madeline. All right, as before, I'll encourage everyone to send their comments either through WhatsApp or for those in the room. Actually, probably best to send them all through WhatsApp since Madeline's not here. So at this time, could I get a timer's report? Yes, both speakers qualify. Two minutes with six minutes and nine seconds. Thank you very much. All right, so both of our speakers qualified on time. So this at this time, then, I'd encourage folks to vote. So if you're in the room, fill out the for, uh, form on the table and drop it in the uh, cup on the table. And for those remote, uh, I know Madeline's remote. I don't know if anyone else is, but you can message Mark, who's our vote counter. Okay, on to our next segment. I'm going to pass, without further ado or further trivia on March Madness, I'm going to hand things over to our Table Topics Master, Mark Sims. Mark, take it away. This is the Table Topics portion of the meeting where you get a chance to speak. Give an unrehearsed answer to a question. There are two things to keep in mind. One is that you need to speak at a minimum of one minute and then a maximum of two minutes and 30 seconds, including the grace period. So you'll see the green card coming up at one, yellow one and a half, red at two, and I will hold that the red card up for the duration. You also need to remember to use the word of the day to exalt. And if you get stuck on how to use it, feel free to exalt me. That'd be fine. No matter what the question is. The questions tonight are relevant to the March Madness theme. And that's actually a type of poignant memory. 
because on the last meeting that we had here in person before we took a COVID break, our call was Toastmaster that night, it was March 12th, 2020, we were getting the news just hammered by the news of what was going on in the world. I think maybe it was a guest that mentioned that March Madness had been canceled. And that was one sign where the, our world was literally temporarily falling apart. Now I'll ask the questions, you can definitely relate them to March Madness, but if you just don't follow college basketball, then you can substitute any sport. And I will give you an example. The first question I have is, have you ever attended either a March Madness event or any other major sporting event? And that question is for Justin Faust. Thank you, Topic Master. I've actually never attended a March Madness event, but I've been to several sporting events. Actually, my alma mater right now is playing in Sweet 16, University of Houston. And my school was pretty unique. It was um, pretty unique in which we didn't really care about basketball. We're more of a football school. We really exalted the football team. There would be posters around the college for the Saturday games, posters. Everyone would go and tailgate like six hours before the game started. It was a huge event. Frats would be there, barbecue, tacos, everything you could eat in one was there. Nachos, guacamole, hot dogs, ribs. It was a whole event, whole ordeal. The whole school would come out. The stadium seats about 40,000 students, people. Our school has roughly 45,000 students. So the entire school would literally come out. They have a difference for our basketball games. Our basketball games, I'm like, uh, let's start going during the first quarter, right? We show up late, <laughs> halftime. We get there, we're up, we're, we're down, who actually cares, right? But the football games, I was there early. I was there tailgating in attendance with all my friends, eating good barbecue, nachos, guacamole. This is why we exalt the football team. This is why at the University of Houston, we're all about football. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. One thing that we need to take into account if we go to a March Madness event or go to some other major sporting event is the cost. I mean, a few days ago, I heard some friends of mine that went to Baylor. They, they were complaining about, I think, the Baylor team losing their basketball games. And one of them mentioned that the price was like $245 which was shocking, but it made me think that about almost 40 years ago, I paid it's like $120, something like that, for a heavyweight boxing championship fight that I attended. So it kind of depends on just what all you're into. And this second question, and you can relate it either to March Madness or any other huge sporting event that you have an interest in, is it really worth the cost? I mean, just how much are you really willing to pay for that? And this question is for Dagan Newland. Okay, the cost of sporting events, is it really worth it? Well, first of all, I really don't care for sports that much. I don't really watch them on TV. I don't, I don't go to the stadiums to watch them there. 
Although I remember one time as a little kid, it's kind of a funny story. I've always been tall. I was, I, I was always the biggest boy in class until, until about sixth grade. Actually, I, I've actually been the same height since sixth grade. And then that's when everybody started to catch up with me. But there's one time I really, I don't remember how old it was, but it's pretty young. Parents took me to a Texas Rangers baseball game one time. They were like passing out freebies for kids under a certain age. And they, they wouldn't believe that I was that age because I was so, so big for my age. So my parents had to convince them that, yeah, you know, he, he is the correct age, but he doesn't you know, really talk for his age. But overall, it's, I don't think it's worth it. I think we pay, personally, that's just my opinion, that we pay these athletes way too much money. They get millions and millions of dollars just to rub and down the field, catching a football or dribbling a uh, basketball or, you know, hitting a baseball. It's like you get millions of dollars just to play and have fun. What's up with that? And then, of course, we're charging, we're giving them millions of dollars to, to, to do this. So that they got to create that money somehow in order, in order of uh, like uh, merchandise and the food concessions at the, at the stadiums. Those are really high prices. It's, it's just not worth it to me. Back to you, table topics, Master. The next question relates to what sports you enjoyed playing when you were young and in school. And that's important because it seems like that kind of dictates the sports that you follow later on in life. So for this question, I would like to ask Madeline, what sports did you enjoy playing when you were young? Thank you, Table Topics Master. You make a great point. I think many times people do enjoy watching the sports they used to play when they were younger. So that might, that also carries on to me because I didn't really play any sports when I was younger and I don't care about watching sports now. I played volleyball for a little bit, played softball for a little bit. In high school, I ran cross country. And so I do enjoy watching the occasional marathon and running is a sport for sure. As far as our March Madness basketball, the extent of my interest is in that is I will win a company prize if I win the bracket. So I quickly filled that out and have already forgotten about it until tonight. I do enjoy going to sporting events occasionally just because it's fun to get out and the experience of it. I went to OU, University of Oklahoma. That's a very large football school. And it's nice to go to OU Texas, that type of sporting event. So I think that's a great way for communities to come together and celebrate. But for me, it's difficult for me to exalt sports in the way that many people do, because I just, I agree with Dagan on a lot of his points. I, some of it just doesn't make sense to me, the way we idolize athletes that being said i think it's a great way um, to bring people of a lot of different backgrounds together and celebrate uh, their hometown or just the sports that they're really interested in all that being said you can clearly tell not really into sports your theory that what you played when you were younger is what you're interested in watching now holds true for me because I didn't really do sports when I was younger and I still don't do them now. <laughs> Master. And part of the thing about following either March Madness or the Super Bowl or the World Series, the World Cup soccer or whatever is our interest in our focus on the famous well-paid athletes and this question is for Suleiman I'd like to ask have you ever met a famous professional athlete tell us about that thank you Mr. Jason. I know we exalt 
professional athletes a lot uh, because they're always on TV. And especially when you're young, you admire athletes a lot. So, you know, I have not played that many sports. I, as a, as a young boy, I played cricket and soccer. I grew up in Pakistan. And then when I came to America, I boxed because Texas boxing is very big. And so in terms of professional athletes that I met, I've met a lot of uh, professional boxers and professional mixed martial arts uh, competitors, uh, but that's the only sport. And, you know, one of the, I learned a lot. I learned a lot speaking with them. So one individual and no name dropping, but one individual who was a professional boxer, I asked him, I said, because I was an amateur boxer, I said, how can I get good? And he said, practice. It was, so, it was so clear for him, right? Because he had won two world titles. And so for him, it was so clear. He said, the more you practice, the better you get. So that was one of the things I learned. Um, other than that, it was just the intensity I learned, right? Meaning when, you, when you're around someone who's competing at a professional level, level, the intensity is so much higher than most regular human beings. Just being in association to them heats you up and you start training at their level. So that was another lesson I learned. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of my journey with professional athletes. Um, those are the kind of professional athletes I've met, and I also admire them a lot because as a young boy, I always admired them. So, thank you. And final question, or let me go back to that, Suleiman, I remember some years ago, this was mid-80s, being at a Texas Ranger game, and I just looked up and I was following boxing at that time and at that time the world 12 weight boxing champion from Fort Worth, Donald Curry came in just to see a game. So I'm starstruck like everyone. I mean, I even made it a point to semi, not quite stalk him, but to kind of be where I, I saw him leave and then I kind of watched for when he would come back. So I managed to accidentally on purpose go. <laughs> so, final question. Since we really enjoy sports, get into them, whether it's March Madness or any other type of sport. Okay, some people overdo it. Final question for Kim Crandall is, would you get crazy and run out onto the field of play to interrupt the game to get yourself on TV? <laughs> Would you run out onto the field of play to interrupt the game and get yourself on TV? Shock us. <laughs> That's an interesting question, Mr. Campbell Congress Master. I will dissolve the virtues of having a lot of fun going to sporting events. But I would have to say no. I would not run out on the field <laughs> for a number of reasons. Have I been to a professional game? Yes, I have. The boys of summer, Texas Rangers. A lot of fun. Part of the fun is seeing everybody else getting really excited and into the game. I have a friend that works for American Airlines Center. And she quotes me the cost of the beer, the food. So people are paying just as much for the food, condiments and all that, as they are for the tickets to the games. <laughs> it's a good diversion, it's a lot of fun. March Madness though, you really have to keep in contact and really focus on who's playing, that's a, a lot of games that you have to focus on. So I, would I run out of the field, Mr. Tabletop Semester? I would say no. <laughs> Thank you. That is a very sensible answer, by the way. I mean, obviously those same people get hauled off and it's actually going back, oh, into maybe the 70s, there was a really tough professional football player named Mike Curtis with the old Baltimore Colts who actually leveled the fan one time who unwisely ran out into the football fields. I don't know why he's like that guy. At this point for the table topics, I want to give a timers report. 
and everyone qualified. Justin spoke one minute, 54 seconds. Dagan, one minute, 29 seconds. Madeline, one minute, 49. Suleiman, one minute, 20. And Kim, one minute, 24 seconds. And Dagan, would you give us a word of the day? Well, everybody used the word day except the grammarian. So but everybody else used the word day. In that case, there will be four different contestants to choose from on your vote. And I'll remind you of what they spoke on. Justin answered the question on whether he had ever attended either a March Madness or a major sporting event. Madeline spoke on what was her favorite sport, in this case, not a lack of favorite sport to play. Suleiman discussed the famous athletes he had met. And Kim wisely answered the question on would she run out onto the field of play. So please vote from among those four contestants. And at this point, I will give it back to our Toastmaster, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. All right. At this time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Justin Faust, our general evaluator. Justin. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Okay. We'll get into our speech evaluations. First, first evaluator will be John Bessel, who will be evaluated Suleiman. Thanks, Justin. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, no guests, but Suleiman especially. All right, let's start. Did a great job. Let's start with, I thought you had a very good opening. You gave us some information about yourself, your personal life, also your personal goals, and also you brought up your professional goals, kind of what you want to do in Toastmasters and how you want to move on from there. So you had three good little sections there that opened up and brought us to get to know you. Would have liked to let them know a little bit more about yourself, but that's just me. <laughs> it must have been life before SMU. <laughs> but you are doing, you did a very good job. I want to say that one of the things that you need to work on is get out from behind the podium and don't lean on the podium. And the other thing is, Try to slow down a little bit. I mean, you gave us a ton of information. You were just running through it, 90 to nothing. And I would have enjoyed it better, absorbed it better if I could have had a little more time to mull on some of the points. Okay. But all in all, it was a great job. You had a lot of good information. You're a very structured person, you're very motivated. And you shared that with everybody else, both in your philosophies and your app and things like that. So that's a good, it would have been nice to tell us what your app is called and where you put your like daily uh, inspirational things. So maybe we could, you know, come in and join in too, unless you don't want us to, but that's fine too. So that would have been good. Yes, let's all clap. Anyway, <laughs> but oh, one thing more, I'd like to uh, work on a stronger ending. Maybe you kind of got rushed it there at the very end and, and you kind of ended it quick, but usually a good ending, you know, kind of wrap up some of your points. And you have a lot of points. I do, I won't forget now growth, service, and experience life. So, great philosophy. I mean, you're a great guy seems like you've got a lot of things motivation going for you but all in all, i think you did a very good job and great start and also too if you were to slow down a little bit we might get a little more vocal variety because you just kind of you know move so fast and stuff it was hard for us to keep up with but it was a great job and for a first speech i thought you did excellent so back to you justin Thank you. Thank you.
Second evaluator will be Rob Giles. He'll be evaluating Madeline. Thank you very much, Mr. Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters, and especially you, Madeline. I'm going to give a little bit different evaluation than you've probably heard before. Some of us have heard it because we've been around a little bit and that is the saw, heard, felt method. I'm gonna give you some positive points, some opportunities for you to think about for each of those sections. So let's go ahead and start with saw. What I saw was an expression that you had toward the latter part of your speech where you actually gave more facial expressions and you had a little bit more life to your facial expressions than you had during the earlier portion of, of your speech. And it added to your points. You seemed worried, you seemed stressed, and your facial expressions kind of mimicked that or echoed that. So I thought you did a good job with that. But on the front end of the speech, I thought you had some opportunities to do some of that as well. And it seemed like you did not grasp onto those opportunities. So you may wanna think about doing that Perhaps when you were talking about initially your cat's safe space, maybe perhaps give a little bit more of a, a stressful vocal variety there uh, and or expression on your face, I should say. So think about those things for saw. As far as heard, I heard a great story and a story that gave us a point from the beginning all the way to the end, which was talking about safe spaces. I thought your content was good, it was full, and I thought that you immediately brought us to a safe space with your cat, and in the end, you brought us right back to that safe space for your cat. And so I thought your content, your organization, your repetition was good, and that's what I heard. Some opportunities as far as that is concerned, I think is maybe changing your vocal variety a little bit, raising your volume, increasing some of your speed, some of your speech rate, so that you can have a little bit more of an enhancement upon some of the things that you're saying. Finally, what I felt. Now, because I'm a cat lover, when you first started off with talking about your cat being lost, that really tugged at my heart, and I felt it because I've had my cat get out from my apartment, and the first thing that I wonder is, is he going to be in the street? Is he going to be in a fight with a cat? Is there going to be some person who doesn't like cats that gets involved with him? So it immediately connected with me, the story itself with the cat. And then I kind of also felt it when you were talking about all that going on and then you're starting a new job. So I felt that stress that you had and I thought that that was great. One of the other things that I thought you might be able to do is to go ahead and back up from the camera and use some more gestures that can help to enhance those feelings that you're trying to present to everybody. So think about those things. One, stay back from the camera, try to use a little bit more facial expressions and a little bit more change in your, in your vocal variety to enhance your speech. Overall, I loved your speech. I look forward to your next one. Back to you, Mr. General Dutton. Thank you, Rob. Now, um, we'll call for a time report. Mr. General Evaluator, both evaluators qualified. John did it two minutes, 39 seconds. And Rob didn't make it close or anything, it was three minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> so he had zero additional time. That's good, both evaluators qualified. Please send your votes to Mark Schroeder. Please send your votes to Mark Schroeder for a best evaluator. Now let's move in to our duties holder portion of the meeting. So once we get our votes in, 
Okay, Dagan Nguyen, you you were both our counter and grammarian. To tell you the truth, I was really kind of more focused on the odd counter roll, even though I didn't really click it. I, I, my reactions are slow, so I didn't, I heard it, but then I didn't click it. You know, it's like, I, they're going to know what I'm talking about. So I, I really do need to get better at that for sure. But for all intents and purposes, everybody really spoke the way they spoke. Everybody spoke good, the, the, you know, the way I know how they speak. Nobody did really anything really bad or anything really exceptional that I heard. But overall, when it comes to the ah and ums and things like that, uh, so Suleiman, during the uh, times that you spoke, you had several ums, some uhs, and the, more, the most common thing was so's. You have a thing with so's, so watch out for that. Tom, you had a so. A couple of times you had repeated words that, 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 the, the, the. And during table topics, I said everybody used a word today. So for me, I think, I believe I had a couple of us when I was up here. As for you knows, I don't catch those myself, so I may have some, who knows. Madeline, Madeline, you had a couple of ums during table topics. And Solomon, you had a couple of um, a couple of us and so's. And John, when you were up here doing your evaluation, you had several so's and a, a couple of us. And that's my report. Back to you. Good one, guys. Thank you, Dave. And now we we'll do a posture monitor with Lisa Mitchell. Um, so for posture monitor, for I noticed for Tom, you had a few uh, grasping of the hands. Solomon, you did a good job, but in your speech, you did a thumbs up movement, so I thought that was a little distracting. Um, and then in the table topics, you were leaning on the podium, and you had your hand on your hips a few times. Um, Mark, Sims, you had um, hand grasping one or two times. And John, you had hand grasping a few times as well. But other than that, I think everybody did a good job. Okay, now I'll talk about the, the entire meeting. The meeting went pretty smooth throughout. We started off a bit late, about 10 minutes late, but you know, we had some technical difficulties. That's understandable. Other than that, it was good. I love the topic. It's ironic. I think I might be the only sports fan here, so I love the topic. I love March Madness. Great, great choice, Tom. I love basketball. So that was a lot of good facts about how much money they make. And it's kind of ironic how they play for free, but make so much money. So funny. Um, I like our both our prepared speeches. Astulamon, that was a great first introduction. Dude, a lot of great information about yourself how you moved here to Dallas and what you do. And like, that was very interesting how you said, how you like to give three parts to each day and make each day important. That was really, um, it was very enlightening. And um, definitely learned a lot from your speech. Madeline, I so enjoyed your speech as well. Very informative, good information. <clears throat> Actually, I had a cat growing up that hit by a car so I understand where you're coming from so definitely pulled on my heart strength as well <clears throat> table topics was good a lot of good information on table topics I like each each person had a different perspective on sports there weren't a lot of sports fans but definitely good speeches throughout the evaluations were good Overall, the meeting went pretty smooth. The only thing really we can really improve upon, I feel like, is the timing, but technical difficulties, that's understandable. So, okay, now let's move into our final portion of our meeting. Let's voting for the big three. So, it's big three is Tom, he's a Toastmaster, table talking. Table topic master is Mark Sims, and me, I am the general 
the evaluator has just been filed. So please vote. Send your votes to Mark Schroeder. He is the vote counter. Okay, now let's move on to our business portion of our meeting, which will be by our Vice President, Rob Giles. Thank you very much, Justin. We have no guests here tonight, or even on Zoom, but that happens sometimes, and March Madness may have something to do with that, who knows? Actually, I had one guest lead that I did not follow up with, so I'm at fault with that. I just re remembered that. So hopefully we'll have that person next week attend with us either here or through Zoom. So we can look forward to that. There's not a whole lot going on. We do have our division contest, and that is for international speech contest and also for evaluation contest. So the evaluations that you see up here every week that throughout our district and throughout Toastmasters as well is going on this season. And we will see people from our area represented, representing us as part of that area in that contest. And that contest is on April 1st, it's a Friday, and that takes place at 7 p.m. It'll probably last, I'm gonna guess two and a half hours, but it is all through Zoom. So if you're interested, there's going to be, I think, four or five contestants in each of those two contests. So I'll send out that information for the Zoom connection as we get closer to April 1st. Everybody can join and attend as guests and perhaps be a little inspired, similar to the way we were inspired by Suleiman's speech tonight. And perhaps learn a little bit more about evaluations, maybe fine tune some of our methods for evaluating as well by listening to some of these people who are competing. Speech contests are a great way to network as well. Even through Zoom, you can meet some people during the contest. So think about that. Think about supporting the members that are representing our area as well. We have dues that are due. so. I don't see anybody in here that, well, I, actually I do see one person in here who has not renewed yet. If you have not renewed, please keep that in mind. If you need a new invoice from our treasurer, let him know and he can send another invoice to you. Our Toastmasters term starts April 1st and it goes through the end of September. At that point, we'll be looking for renewals for anybody that wants to continue on from there. Because we only have one person that is in need of renewing, that we know of at least at this point, that means that most of us renewed, or at least when we joined, we joined for an extended period of time, which is a great thing. And we actually had eight members renew by March, I think it was March 15th, which means that we are going to get $50 in bookstore bucks, which we can use toward the spring conference, which takes place toward the end of April. And I'll get into that as well. Hopefully we can collect enough of our bookstore bucks because if we can get 125 of those, those are basically fake dollars that are used by District 50 in order to purchase items off of the bookstore, for lack of a better term. And basically it's Toastmasters purchased, or District 50 purchased a bunch of stuff from Toastmasters and they, all, they have it in their quote unquote bookstore and we can purchase from that. One of the things that we can purchase is attendance for our club to the district conference, which includes all of the speech contests for the district, which would be, as I mentioned before, the evaluation contest, the international speech contest, also the humorous speech contest and tall tales contest from last fall. So some things to think about as we move down the road. I don't really have anything else as far as business is concerned. If any of our officers have anything else that they may want to bring up, now is the time. I give you the floor if you need it. All right. So since 
All of that is done. It's time to find out who won our best speaker, our best table topic speaker, our best evaluator, and best of the big three. It's amazing because we have four winners tonight, which we don't always have, but it's, it's a thrill. We had two great speeches. We had at least one good evaluation. And, <laughs> and we had three people who did a great job with our best of the big three. A fantastic job, in my opinion, because of our delayed start. It was a great way to reference time and keep time in mind as we moved along. It was a great way to cur curtail it until I got up here during the business portion of the meeting and just blew all of that time saving away. So let's go ahead and get our vote counter up here to give us all the good news. Mark Shorter. Thank you, Rob. All right, so we're gonna start off in a, we're kind of doing it in an unusual order tonight for a particular reason, but we will start off with our best speaker tonight. All of our contests tonight were contested as opposed to uncontested. We had votes in all counters. So we're gonna start off with best speaker, and that is gonna be Suleiman. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna to go to Suleiman's evaluator. Our evaluator tonight, who, the person who did the best job on their evaluation, votes went to Rob Giles. Rob. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna do best of the big three which we would normally do last, but I'll explain that in a moment. Best of the big three is going to go to Mark Sims. Congratulations, Mark. And finally, and this is going to be kind of a double award in some weird way, uh, this one is going to the best table topic. And the best table topic, let me do the first part of it first, and maybe you'll understand. So I have something here that I'm going to bequeath to someone. It's a set of playing cards. It has the number zero on it, one half, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty, forty, one hundred, and question mark. And of course, everybody is wondering, what the hell are these? It turns out this is a set of Agile Scrum playing cards. And there is nobody that I would rather bequeath these to in this room than Justin Faust, who is our best table topics winner. Congratulations. That concludes our awards for tonight. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you all for coming tonight. Madeline, thank you for attending through Zoom. I hope we get to see you at least one more, one more week, but we'll find out, I guess, soon enough. Thanks again, and everybody have a great week. Keep your eyes peeled for next week's lineup. Remember, quick replies are always the best replies. This meeting is adjourned. Thanks all, I'm heading out. I, I plan to be here next week, so. Say again, I was just saying I'm heading out, but I, I plan to be at the next meeting and looking forward to it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Madeline.